Hello, my name is Dr. Nicholas. I've been asked if I could say a few words to our international graduates. These are internationally educated professionals or internationally educated health professionals or international medical graduates. International medical graduates are doctors who come to Canada from all over the world and their aim is to come here and practice medicine. A number of them will be very successful. A number of them or will, be, uh, will take some time to be able to graduate and take the licensing exams, the qualifying exams and part one and part two and then get your residency. To get licensed is one thing. To be able to get your residency program and allowed to practice is quite a different matter. A third group of international medical grads has been my experience that you won't unfortunately ever get to practice medicine here in Canada. So there's a large number of international medical graduates who will not be able, it will just simply take too long or in the long run they will not really be able to practice here. A good alternative is clinical research. Of all the areas of healthcare training the one area that will include most and allow you to use most of your medical training knowledge from your country is clinical research. That's why we offer this program. We take in a large number of international medical graduates and they enjoy the program immensely. See, post-secondary education here in Canada is divided into three big groups. One is the Canadian universities. This is the largest group. They have of the order of 50 to 100,000 students. The second group are the community colleges. In Ontario, we call them the Ontario Community Colleges. They have maybe five to 10,000 students. And then we have a lot of career colleges, which will take of the order of tens to 100, 150 students on average. North American College of Information Technology offers an excellent clinical research training program. It is accessible. You can contact us. We will review your qualifications and experience. We will be able to counsel you and advise you on exactly what your best choice or alternatives inside of clinical research training might be. Clinical research is divided down the middle into two great big areas. One is the industry side, pharmaceutical industry and contract research organizations. That's on the one side. On the other side, there's the academic, a university-based, more hospital-based type of clinical research. We can explain all of this to you and try and direct you or give you advice as to what your best career path might be. Again, this is for the internationally trained medical professionals. Professionals Among the internationally trained medical professionals, we also include dentists and nursing professionals, and some with PhDs and master's degrees as well. We are available. We suggest you contact us and we will be able to advise you. Clinical research is the one area of practice in Canada where you're going to be able to use most of the training that you have learned back home. Whether you're a doctor, general internist, general practitioner, or specialist, orthopedic surgeon, uh, general surgeon, neurosurgeon. I've had all of these internationally trained doctors in the program. If you're a nurse, a general nurse, a specialized nurse, emergency room, operating room nurse, we've had them all in the program. If you're a dentist, if you're a general dentist, general practitioner of your specialist, maxillofacial surgery, orthodontist, uh, um, periodontist, we have trained a number of internationally trained dentists as well. These people all find the area of clinical research extremely interesting and they develop good careers. I'm been asked to talk to the students, our undergrad students in Canadian universities for a minute, to give you a little bit of advice or an outline on what clinical research is and why it might be 
interesting for you as a career. We go out and speak to groups of students at Canadian universities in and around Toronto. We can't go too far, but we do make a big effort to contact you. Otherwise, the contact and communication can be via the web. It's been my experience that in these groups, which may be 30 or 50 or 60 students, uh, after the, I give the presentation, we have a question period, and some of them ask, what can I do now? I spent three or four years in an undergraduate degree, and I'm in my third year now, and I'd like to know what clinical research offers me. But it's been a big surprise. I thought I would go into a job. See, typically an employer, when you show up for an interview, an employer might ask you, all right, you've got an excellent degree here, in a BSc and a major in this or that, or Bachelor of Health Science. Tell me, what do you know how to do? And the answer is often not very much. In order to best market yourself, it is very useful if you have been trained in a series of skill sets. This means you can do stuff rather than talk about it and explain historical facts or geographical facts or history about ancient art and architecture or philosophy or political science. These are excellent liberal subjects which have added enormously to our education. But when it comes time to getting a job, the interviewer, again, may ask you, all right, what do you know how to do? And it may not be that much. Your options are to take a break. If you've had an extra four years as a BSc in a university after your high school, and you figure, uh, I'd like to have a break. I'd like to go out and get a job. I'd like to get work now. That's one option and I've outlined some of the things you might encounter along that way. The other option, of course, is to stay inside the university. I spent myself, I spent 17 years in the academic environment. So you can stay inside the university. You finish your undergrad, you can take a master's degree. This offers some degree of specialization and research, and you may be employable after a master's degree. Or you can move even further and take a PhD. A PhD has a more philosophical, in-depth understanding of a narrow area of knowledge. So these are continued, you are continuing on inside the university environment, the academic, pure academic environment, also called the ivory tower, also called the academic bubble. This is excellent and it's fine. We have some of the best universities in the world right here in Ontario. But when you ask students to explain their future or their understanding of the future. Sometimes it's not too clear. So the purpose of this talk to you is to outline what these options are. Again, you can make your split and go out and get work. Now you may need to learn how to actually do stuff. To be proficient, skilled and fast at doing something. You do it right the first time. Some of the placement sites or employers will not be willing to train you. That's up to you. You have to get yourself trained first. That's what we do. If we're talking about clinical research, which is a medical act, medicalized activity, you're interested in clinical research, you'll have to get trained in clinical research. We have probably the best program in Ontario, probably the best in Canada right now. We call this the gold standard program. We train you for a vast range of activities and options. So when you see options out there, you can pick and choose which one you would like to pursue. If you're untrained, you may be stuck in a corner in front of a computer to do data entry or data cleaning. That's all you'll be able to do because you can't do anything else. So my advice to you is if you're interested in clinical research, to get trained. We will come to your university and give you fellows a presentation if there are enough of you and you're not too far away. Otherwise, we will give you information as to how you may contact us. So if you're an undergrad student worrying what to do in your fourth year now, what happens next? 
you may want to contact us and we can give you some advice. This will be in the area of clinical research, a very medical medicalized activity which will afford you access into the medical world. Thank you.